In this video, I'll be showing you how to do an initial setup of Kodi. So that'll be how to add movies and TV programs into your video library and how to get a surround sound output. Now the sound output will be mainly focusing on the Linux side of things, just purely because it's a little bit more complicated there nowadays. Right, to add movies and TV programs to your videos library, so I'll navigate across to videos. I'm just using the arrow keys on the keyboard and then press enter to select an item. You can use the mouse as well or a remote control but uh, I'm not covering remote controls in this video. Right, so if you select files then add videos and then navigate across the browse button. And there's a few different options here from where you can get the videos from so it could be on your local machine, your home folder or your my documents folder. We could have it on a network drive, Windows network, or SMB share. We can add a different sort of network connection. So in here I could use SSH and type in the server address. Um, do you know what? I'm going to take SMB because it is far simpler. So SMB, because I'm storing all my files on my NAS. Oh, this is not home, it is work group. NAS. You can see how I've organized the folders here, so I've got movies and TV in separate folders. Now I'm not going to add my whole library because that will take forever. So I'm just going to choose one folder, then say OK. I can give it a name. Movies on NAS and OK. Now to tell it what this folder contains. So what does it contain? It has movies. I fancy using IMDB for an add-on so I'm going to change that to get more. And I want the Universal Movie Scraper. So select that and then install. And then go back, press the backspace. Now to edit this item, so I press C, then select Edit Source, and OK. So this directory contains movies using the Universal Movie Scraper. Right, you've got different options here. So are movies in separate folders? No, they're in one folder. So I'll go into settings. Okay, this is a bit more of an advanced feature here, but we can get the titles from various different sources. So preferred language, ah, English. That's the closest I can get to being English. Right, set collection name from the movie DB. Yes, that's fine. Um, no, I'm ignoring that part. So plot, yep, that's fine, that's fine. And I'll leave all that as is. So OK. Then OK. Yes, I would like to refresh. Now while it does that, I'm going back, so pressing backspace. Across to the system settings. A video library. Go down to update library on startup, press enter. Group movies into sets, press enter on that as well. I'm not worried about anything else there. Playback. Preferred audio language. Probably an idea if you choose your language on here. So I will choose Where's English? Oh, there it is. I scrolled past it. English. Right, no, not playing the next video. So displaying the old 4x3 resolution videos as stretch them out. Your choice here, of course. I uh, don't need to do anything else here. Um, yep, that's all okay. Going to push up to the settings level of expert. Right, this is crossing over into the playback of the videos now. It's a good idea if you have hardware acceleration. Right, it depends on the capability of your graphics card. 
I'm using MPEG-4 VDPIU and allow hardware acceleration, yes. Um, nothing else we need to change, so let's go back, pressing backspace. All right, let's go across to movies and have a look at that. So, oh, what a cheeky one to open up on. <clears throat> right, huh? So everything is there. And you can see that the Ace Ventura collection has been organised into one group because there are two films there, but I'm only seeing one on the main menu. So what shall we open? Uh, let's go for... Ah, Eraser. And that's in HD. Press I to get the information about it. Oh, it's only a HD 720. Oh, well, thing is, movies in the 90s were not filmed in HD 1080 because that format didn't exist back then. Now press space to pause it. Now M to go across into the sub menu. And I'm going to tweak a few settings here. So that is on the video settings. Now I can leave the first few things there, but yeah, we can crop block. We can crop black bars. The view mode. Good idea to set it to stretch 16:9 if you have a 16 by 9 display. Post processing. If your graphics card is able to do it, you can start playing around with the noise reduction and sharpness. Not all graphics cards are capable though, as I found with the AMD AM1 graphics cards, can't quite manage it. Now if you made some changes here, you can set it as default across all videos, so in particular that zooming to 16x9, so let's set that as default, so yes, and go back into the sound menu. Uh, there's not much I can change here, because although I can try and enable the pass through, it's not going to work at this point. And press X to stop the movie. So adding TV programs is the same sort of thing. So you go across into videos, files, add videos, browse, choose where the videos are located. Now for simplicity, I'm going to choose SMB again. So work group, NAS, TV, and I'm only going to choose one of these again because it will take quite a while to index. So uh, how about Futurama? Oh, so OK, then OK. TV. I think it took me well over an hour to index it last time I tried, so you can see why I'm not going to demo it in this video. So I can tell it this directory contains TV shows, choosing a scraper, the TVDB. TVDB is actually a very good scraper. But right, now to get down to the settings, so sometimes you have to go left and right to get there. So settings. Um, Actually, nothing I need to change there. I can leave it all as is. So, OK. Then OK. Yes, refresh. Crack on with it. Okay. Right. It's important how you organise your media collection. Now, one suggestion I have is to separate out your movies and TV programmes into separate folders. Now, if we go into the movies, I've organised mine by years just purely because it makes it slightly easier. There's no real reason you have to do it that way unless your library is enormous, then yeah, here's one suggestion. Right, now if I go into the folders, you can see how I've named them here. So I've got the movie name and the year in brackets. I've done that to sort of assist Cody in being, being able to find the movie because you can get the movies of the same name sort of over different years and they don't put number one, two, three, etc. after it, so that can help. Another option on the naming is that you can use the info files, the .nfos. Now these come with some downloads that you might acquire through various means, and that contains the movie source in there. So you can either use that or name the video. Another thing you can do is puts Blu-ray in title, and that just emphasises the fact that it's a Blu-ray, and you'll see the little icon in Kodi. Across into TV, TV programmes are organised more by season, so you've got yeah, the seasons in various different folders. And then within the title you've got S01, 
easier one, say for instance. Season 1, Episode 1. Uh, title is optional, but as long as you've got the name of the program somewhere and the season and episode number, Cody should be able to find it from that. Music is a bit different again, I've just organised those by albums, but uh, I'm not really covering that in this video. Now this is very weird why it has not indexed Futurama. Hmm. Because it should. Ah. In fact, I know why it has not done it. Uh, let me go and edit the source. It's because it doesn't know what program it is. Because it's too far into that location. So if I just say NAS slash TV, and until it contains a TV show. It works. Funny old thing that. So this is like the movies, you can go in there and scroll down through the seasons, press I to get the info about them, you can play something, press O to bring up the system stats there, and X to shut it. So now to sort out the audio, so that's settings, scroll down to system, and audio output. Select an audio device, hmm, still doesn't really work. Let me try this in the virtual machine because I don't want to start messing up my own system. Right, an easy way to get the audio to bitstream in Ubuntu is to remove pulse audio. And why is that? Well, because Pulse Audio cannot bitstream, it is not capable of it. So what you need to do is have Kodi to default to using the ALSA sound system. There is another way you can do it, and I'll include a link in the description. The trouble is, by removing Pulse Audio, you remove the, well, the Ubuntu Desktop Meta Package, the Ubuntu Control Center, although it gets replaced with the GNOME Control Center, so that doesn't really matter and you'll lose the ability to adjust the volume on the desktop. But if you're bitstreaming, that doesn't really matter because you'd be bitstreaming to an amplifier. If that's not what you're trying to do and you're just trying to listen through the monitor speakers, then don't do this. Right, and then reboot. Now I'm sorry about the quality here because I'm recording in a virtual machine. It's not quite as good as recording it off on a real system. Anyway, same thing again, we go across to System, Settings, then System. Change the settings level to Expert, then go to Audio Output. And within this list you'll find HDMI output. It might be named after the amplifier, or it might just be named HDMI. You, know, you might have to try a couple of different options here. Then set the number of channels. So mine might be 5.1. I mean, I've got no easy way of doing this. I might have to just take a photo of my system downstairs and I'll show you what it looks like. But you'll see the pass through audio, and then you'll see a list of different codecs to choose from. And now you choose those based on what your amplifier can do, be it whether Dolby or DTS standard, or right up to Dolby H True HD or DTS HD Master. Then once you've done that, go across into a video. Press M, interview audio, and then enable pass through. And then you'll set it as default. And that will enable a bit streaming. One more thing I will do, hopefully it's not getting too long, is to show you adding the weather component. So that is into system settings, weather, general, and then you go across and choose a service for the weather. So I'll go across into get more. One I've had most luck with is Yahoo weather. If I select that and install, and then press backspace, then choose the Yahoo Weather add-on, settings, 
highlight the first location and choose your nearest town, city, so I'm going to try Cardiff, that's Cardiff, Wales, then go down to OK, backspace, backspace, home, and then we see weather is there, and also pictures add-on menu is in the right place, so weather, 39 degrees Fahrenheit. So that is how to do some of the initial setup of Kodi. So there you go, enjoy a, a lovely uh, free open source home entertainment center. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.